Are you ready to score some easy points in your pickleball game? I got you covered. Hey everybody, it's CJ Johnson. Earlier this week, I got together with Tony Roy from Into Pickle and we did a webinar on three power moves that you can add to your game to help you to win more rallies. Make sure to check out the entire webinar. In fact, I will link to uh, power move number one and number three from this particular video. So make sure you watch the cards coming up above or click on the description down below. You're also gonna wanna spend a little time checking out our new online learning community, VI Pickleball. It is sure to be the talk of 2021. Welcome everyone to three power moves to win more pickleball points. Uh, today, you're gonna learn how to play better pickleball by making the ultimate shift from someone who struggles with strategy and performance to a player who confidently and instinctively execute. So let's talk about what is going to be happening during the day. Here's the agenda. We're gonna to get to those three power moves momentarily. After we do, we are going to introduce you to our new immersive online pickleball community, VI Pickleball. And then after that, we'll be staying here to get all your questions answered in a Q&A session. Absolutely, CJ and I, uh, talked about it and we came up with what we think are re three really interesting power moves that we can share with you today. We're going to talk about short returns. You're going to see that's a super overlooked uh, part of this game. That power move super nice power move. You're going to get some nice easy points there. We're going to work on some offensive lobs at the non-volley zone, a skill for anybody. Anybody can use the skill effectively. And we're going to talk about aggro dinking, which is a really interesting way of dinking and looking at the game a little different. All right, let's jump into power move number two. Take it away here, Tony. You got it, CJ. It's one of my favorites. This is the non-volley zone lob. I love this lob because it allows you to break a stalemate at the non-volley zone. And one of the beauties about this shot is it's available to all skill levels. No matter where you're at in your game, you can bring this into your as part of your repertoire while you're playing up at the non-volley zone. And it's basically just a long dink. We'll, talk, we'll show that in a second. But let me just set it up on the board real quick. And I'm going to do it really quickly here. So you're up here. You're one of these, you know, you're just dinking, dink, 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 all over the place, right? So the ball comes here. That feels pretty good to you. You're able to take a, kind of put your weight into this ball. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to take that ball and you're going to throw it up and over your opponents there. Now, what happens when you do that, when you hit this ball is these two players have to decide, what do I do? They obviously just can't let it bounce, right? So now either one's got to go back, this one's got to go back, they both go back, whatever. But the point is, one or both of them have to, have to depart the, the non-volley zone. What that means is you now have control at the non-volley zone. At one or both of your opponents are off the non-volley zone, which is what you want. It's a power move because it allows you to take control of the rally. CJ, why don't you give them some of the advantages of the non-volley zone? I'm going to spool up some rallies and really show them how this works. Absolutely. So again, there's, th there's three things to keep in mind when you're doing this. A few of the advantages is when you're in a dinking stalemate, right? You, you're across the non-volley zone from some people who are very capable of dinkers. You can hit 20, 30 dink shots right in a row. Being able to have that non-volley zone or the, the non-volley zone lob, the offensive lob, is going to give you the opportunity to make those players retreat and pull away from that dinking battle. Uh, I, a really good thing here is this can be done at all levels. There really isn't a downside. Uh, as long as you're getting that person to step two to three paces off the non-volleys online, and, and with the exception, if they're not a fantastic smasher, I mean, if they absolutely have a great overhead, might not be the best time to try it against that person. But for the majority of people, if you can get them two, three steps off the line, you're going to cause a problem. And, and then the third advantage to this is you're keeping them guessing. It makes them uncomfortable. If you're in a dink rally and you don't know if that person is going to lob you or not, your body weight goes forward. Maybe your body weight comes back just a little bit, but it really keeps them on edge. So those are some of the advantages to using this strategy. So Tony, it looks like you have the video queued up. Is that right? Re re ready to go, CJ. And I, I love the fact the last thing you said is amazing. So that when you keep your, keep your opponents uh, on their toes. I mean, that's, if, if you can make your opponents uncomfortable, power to you. 
All right, so let's start with the power move number two rallies we're going to break down for you. And so here, that looks like C.J. Johnson, I think, there. And you can see the, the curious thing about this photo is you can see the ball there at C.J.'s turn. I, I want to stop here for one second just because this is really good shoulder turn. And a lot of players make the mistake of backing up, right? We're not focusing on that today, but super dangerous to do that. You want to turn your shoulder just like C.J. does here. So kudos, C.J., on the shoulder turn. All Thank right, you. Let's, let's get rolling on this thing here and see what's up all right so well, we're gonna we're, oh i love this rally cj this is stephanie lane on this side stephanie lane you can't see her right now because it's like a gift that we're unwrapping for you stephanie lane is the queen of the lob she is a 5.0 pro senior player with a ton of medals on her i don't know if she hangs on her wall but she has a ton of medals um and many of them are because of this one shot in arsenal she's very good all the way around but this one shot in arsenal is her killer shot so here we have the serve by dave weinbach he's going to hit a little third shot here so basically, Stephanie, Stephanie just came into the picture there, Stephanie with the, with the white tank top. Uh, Stephanie's running up to the MBZ. So basically we have, this is our standard non-volley zone. You know, we're going to start working, right? And the players on the other side, just to, to give you the power of this, of this shot, players on the other side are probably 20 years younger than the players on this side, maybe even more. Uh, the player on, on the left there is Josh Grubbs. He's the son of uh, Rocket or Rodney Grubbs from, from uh, Pickleball Rocks, if you know that company. Uh, really good player, young, active player. So let me stop here real quick because I want to show you. So this is – Stephanie's going to go up to the first ball. Nice and smooth little dink, right? No big deal. Just move the ball around a little bit. Get scooped up there. Now Stephanie's going to move Josh over. She doesn't like Josh's crowding her there, I think. So she moves him over, right? So then here we go. And now what's Stephanie going to do here? A dink? Don't think about it. She's going to lob it, right? So look at that. So it looks like she's going to come over there and dink it. Up it goes. Now, one thing I want to stop here. So right here, right here, the player, their, her opponents are just starting to realize that it's a lob. And that ball's over their head because of that delay that happens between our mind and between our eyes, our brain, and our hands and our feet. Look at that. Now Josh is like, oh, I better get going, right? And now they're in trouble. So they, he goes. His partner rightly starts to move over because she says, well, I got to cover the other side. But there's that delay we talked about, right? Now look what happens. Ball comes over. Uh-oh. Court's open. Stephanie Lane, little poker. End of the rally. So it's the non-body zone lob here allows Stephanie and her partner Dave to basically take control of that rally. What, right before the lob gets hit, I mean, this is a really good aggro dink we'll talk about in a second. This is a really nice dink by Stephanie, right? But after, he, after Josh hits it, he's a young athletic player. He recovers. He's back in position. His partner's in position. What's she going to do here? Dink again? No. What she does is she uses the power move. And like, like CJ said earlier, power move does not have to be aggressive and hard. This is basically a really long dink. Look at that thing. It's just a big dink, a huge dink over their heads. And that allows her to take control, push them off the line, like I showed you on the board, right? Create space and win the rally. Okay, let's look at it a couple more times here. We're going to look at it in a, uh, this is a mixed doubles match. What we're going to see here is, oh, I like this, this rally. It's one of my favorite rallies here. We're going to see a beautiful execution of a, of a non volleyball lob in a second. So we have the serving team on this side. Okay, so now they've moved up, right? So here, see this nice little neutral ball like I showed you on the board, that nice right in the middle, right? Player in blue, what's he going to do? It looks like a dink, right? It looks like a dink to me. But he says, not so fast. Let's throw that puppy up there. Look at that. Look at that thing. So the player next to us, I mean, she's almost like, I feel like she's got to run into me, right? She's coming back. Boom, she's got to hit that ball. Now her partner, who is her husband, uh, stays up there. I like this little attack there to him, right? He, now he backs up. Now we have the line we established over here, but look where they're standing, right? They had gained the non-volley zone. Player in blue hit one shot, pushed them off the line, right? So now they're going to keep him back. That's good technique. The player on, on this side, the female player is working and working. I think Donna's her name. Peter's her husband, I think. So you got them working. Now she's just basically, she's, she's working away up there, right? She's working, working, and working, right? Keep on working. And I love this part here with CJ. So here you have finally the, the husband's up there. Boom. And if you watch this match, it's, on, it's online. But if you watch this match right here, I, I, I think it's curious because everybody's clapping right now, right? It's just a put away. No, 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 no. His wife, she did all the work. She went back. She got that thing. She got him up the line. Listen, great overhead, but come on. She did all the work. All right, let's look at one more. So here's a non-volley zone lob attack. This is a really good, um, a really interesting match. So eight and nine is a 15-point uh, game. Here you have these players coming up. Look, now we got the non-volley zone, right? They're going to battle back and forth. These are some of the best senior players around, right? 
super seamer even. So you have some just some nice little dinking here going on, a little movement there. The, these four players here can dink. They can, we can dink for another 45 minutes out here, right? But wait a minute, what are we doing? Oh, look at that, right? So Gary's his name with the black shirt on, comes over. Looks like a dink, right? Looks like a dink to me. What about you, CJ? Looks like a dink, and then boom. There you got the lob, right? Uh-oh, player in blue's got to run back, right? Look at that. It's a, it's a mess now for the other team, right? So this is right here is what you're looking for. You're looking to push them off the line, win or lose. It's not, a, it's not necessarily you're going to win every time, but you're pushing them off the line and making them work. Now they have to work their way up. They're keeping them back. They're keeping them back. You know, so now the team on the other side just has to keep working and working and working to try and make it back up. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. So basically it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of work now for the team on the other side. Uh, and then you have you know, a little bit of defense on this side here. You know, so now they're fighting. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's fighting again. But the key there was the key power move there was a lob by Gary, pushing him off the line, getting him to move back and have to work again. So keys to the, the uh, offensive lob, available at all levels. Indefensible if hit well. Nothing you can do about it except go back and get it. And as CJ mentioned earlier, it creates a lot of discomfort and uncertainty. You have teams moving around not knowing you're going to lob them. of the narrative of the game. Uh, you can go out there and play pickleball passively and just take whatever happens to you, win or lose, or you can be the protagonist in, in your own game, take control of it, and ultimately, hopefully, win more games. And it's the same thing, CJ, with, with learning pickleball. You know, one of the things that you and I talk about about learning pickleball is you are going to learn it passively or proactively. So the question at the end of the day is, would you like us as a player to teach you how to take control of your game, gain confidence, and ultimately become the player you really want to be? Because here's what we've got for you. At this point in time, there's really two options. I mean, you can try to keep improving on your own without a plan, but you're going to run the risk of being in the same place next year. Or option number two, you 100% commit to improving your game with coaches like Tony and I and a community designed to answer your questions and support you every step of the way. If option number two sounds like something that interests you, we'd like to invite you to VI Pickleball. Uh, CJ and I built VI Pickleball to be the only, the only immersive pickleball training community of its kind that teaches you techniques and strategies to create a clear path to success. So here are some of the things that we focus on in, in building this model. We wanted to make sure that you learn how to understand the best strategy for the situation that you're in, learn to apply the tactics at the appropriate time, like we talked about today when we talked about the short return attack and things like that. How to become proactive in your game as opposed to just being reactive as you play. Using these power moves is one of the elements of doing that. Creating reliable shots, including a reliable third shot, and overall improving your pickleball fitness. Now here's one of the things that Helen had to say about online learning. She said, I'm an information per person. The sessions were well organized and contents rich. CJ shared great resources and provided us access to additional items mentioned during the sessions. The online format made it easy to interact with her. And that is from Helen. So inside VI Pickleball, there are three major components. So there's a 24 seven on demand digital library. There's live coaching with Tony and I, and then of course there's a community full of resources and support. For more information on VI Pickleball, check out wearepickleball.com for more information. You're gonna to wanna to be a part of this community.